enthusiast or buyer, cars or bikes. All you need from the auto world is right here on the Autocar India YouTube channel. So hit that subscribe button. Scooters, they play such an important role in the lives of almost all young people these days. I know I spent a majority of my college days in one, but back then, we weren't this spoiled for choice. You took what you got and you ensured that you had as much fun as possible with it. But these are very different times. We now have three brand new 125cc scooters, all targeted at the young and restless. So that begs the question, which one of these is the best? Well, let's find out. Let's begin with a scooter that's been around the longest of these three, Honda's new Grazia. Based on the Activa 125, the Grazia is perhaps the most familiar looking scooter here. It gets a bold and contemporary look, but it isn't a big departure from the design philosophy seen on its younger sibling, the Dio. The name Grazia is derived from the scooter's premium aspirations, and as such, it's the only scooter here to offer a full LED headlamp. We also like the motorcycle-like instrument cluster, and the front storage space is convenient as well, but the plastic does feel quite flimsy. The Grazia also has a nice seat release mechanism, but you still have to lift the seat up to access the fuel filler cap. Overall, aside from the rough finished metal foot pegs, the Honda is the best put together scooter here and it feels like a quality product. The Grazia is a handsome scooter, no doubt, but it does very little to truly stand out from the crowd, something the next scooter in this lineup does like almost nothing else. The Aprilia SR125 looks almost identical to its bigger brother, the SR150, aside from a slightly longer seat and new colour schemes. And that's no bad thing, because the SR is a fantastic looking scooter with handsome Italian lines and a clear sporting intent. It's the only scooter here with 14-inch wheels and their well-finished units that add so much to the design. The downside is that they do eat into the storage space, which makes the SR the least practical scooter here. Finish levels are decent and the instrument cluster is very basic. And when you look beyond the striking design, you will notice the SR's lack of any extra frills or features. The Aprilia is the best looking and most unique scooter here by a fair margin, but it is missing out on some rather basic things. For example, the rear grab rail and side stand come as optional extras and you don't get a brake lock clasp either. TVS claims stealth aircraft inspiration for the Entoc, and that's evident in its angular lines as well as the afterburner inspiration for the rear. The tail lamp also gets an attractive diffused LED effect. Like the Aprilia, the Entoc has a set of nicely finished alloy wheels, but these span 12 inches at both ends. Overall, the TVS is a good looking scooter, but the design is a little bit busy with four different finishes across the bodywork and perhaps a few too many design elements for some tastes. But there's more to the Entoc, and it also happens to be the most feature-packed scooter on sale today. The engine kill switch is unique, and it also has a generously sized underseat storage space with a little LED light and a USB charging port. An external fuel filler cap is another bonus. The big draw, however, is in the fully digital instrument panel, which packs over 30 features, including an engine temperature gauge, lap timer, average speed display, and a service due reminder. It also connects to your phone via Bluetooth, allowing the rider to view various details like incoming call alerts, SMS alerts, last park location, navigation assists and more. Ultimately, this level of connectivity is a game changer in the Indian scooter market. The Entoc has a funky and striking looking rear end, but TVS has played it a little too safe with the design up front. As a result, if it wasn't for these matte colour finishes, you wouldn't really notice the Entoc in traffic until it passed you and you looked back at it and not a lot of people tend to do that. With the important business of the design out of the way, let's get to the even more important aspect of what powers these machines. Starting with the Grazia, which is a typically Honda package, mild and linear, but not ultimately exciting. The Grazia's motor produces the lowest power figure here, but makes up for it with 10.5 Nm of torque, which is higher than the Aprilia and on par with the TVS. Now while the Aprilia might offer the lowest stock, it makes up for it with the biggest power figure of 9.52 horsepower, which is just over what the TVS offers. Both the TVS and the Aprilia have three valve engines, while the Honda uses a simpler two valve setup.
special mention must be made of the TVS's exhaust note, which is nicely deep at low speeds, but does fade into a more scooter-like soundtrack as the speeds rise. Of the three, it's the Honda engine that's the least impressive. It's smooth and peppy down low, but the engine starts to sound and feel strained upwards of 70 km per hour. The Aprilia, on the other hand, it sounds gruff, but it's actually quite a smooth engine. But neither of these can match the TVS for outright refinement. But these are 125cc scooters we're talking about, so outright performance is just as important as feel and refinement. The results here are quite interesting, and it's the NTOC that posts the quickest acceleration time from 0 to 60 km per hour, and also the best roll on acceleration times, and this hints at the strongest real world performance. The Grazia comes second, while the Aprilia posts the slowest acceleration times. Now, this isn't surprising given that the SR125 is the heaviest scooter here, weighing a whole 15 kilos more than the Honda. The SR also has a perceptible weakness in the mid range performance but it accelerates well again at higher speeds, redeeming itself with the highest top speed. The SR goes on to display a quite shocking 125 km per hour on the Speedo, but it turns out that the Speedo is highly optimistic, and our V-Box revealed that the true speed is just over 100 km per hour, which is still quite impressive nonetheless. In comparison, the TVS tops out at 95, while the Honda can do a best of just under 88 km per hour. Fittingly then, the lightweight and moderately powered Honda returns the best fuel efficiency, while the heavy Aprilia with its fat tyres is the least efficient. So yes, these scooters are decently quick in a straight line, but there's also the equally pertinent question of how fun they are to ride in all road conditions. And a large part of that comes down to the seating position. The Grazia is the most compact feeling here and the bar is too low for my liking. That said, it has the widest seat and is the most friendly for pillions. All told, this is a scooter that shorter riders will appreciate the most. The Entox strikes the nicest balance here. The seat height remains accessible for shorter riders, but the higher set handlebar is friendly for tall riders too. The seat itself is nicely shaped, but I do think it's a little too soft for my liking. The Aprilia, on the other hand, is on the other end of the spectrum. It has a surprisingly high seat height, which gives you a great vantage point in traffic, but also means short riders definitely won't like it. To add to that, this seat is the least comfortable here, both for the rider and the pillion. And with that out of the way, let's get to how these scooters actually feel to ride. The Grazia shares its chassis with the Activa 125, and it's the only one with a 10-inch rear wheel. It happens to feel the most like a small scooter and is highly nimble on its feet and leans over very quickly, perhaps even a little too quickly. Hop onto the SR immediately after the Grazia and it's almost like you've gotten on a motorcycle. The SR's big wheels and surprisingly long wheelbase give it immense stability in comparison. And thanks to the sticky tyres, you can really corner this thing hard. For sheer undiluted sportiness, the Aprilia plays in another league altogether. But that doesn't mean that the NTOC isn't fun in its own right. And while the TVS feels noticeably heavier than the Honda, it's also that much more stable and enthusiastic to corner. Where the TVS really shines though is in its ride comfort, and it handles potholes without any of the crashiness that you get on most scooters. All the three scooters feature a telescopic fork up front, but there's a plushness to the TVS's ride quality and bump absorption that makes it an absolute pleasure on our roads. The Honda's ride comfort is decent too, but it's not a standout feature by any means. The same can't be said for the Aprilia though, which has a tendency to pick up every imperfection on the road, and this results in a very stiff and jittery ride. Ultimately, the SR demands perfect roads, and that's not something India is willing to deliver. All three scooters come with a front disc brake, and the Honda offers a combined braking system as well. While the SR has the strongest braking performance, you do have to respect the front brake lever because too much pressure will lock the tyre. To sum up, the Grazia is more nimble in traffic, but it simply isn't as fun to ride as the other two. The Aprilia, meanwhile, is the sportiest scooter here, but it's let down by annoyingly uncomfortable front suspension. 
And that brings us to the TVS. The end top, we wish it was slightly more sporty, but it has to be said that this scooter does a fantastic job of combining fun and comfort, possibly better than anything else on the market right now. Let's wrap this up now, starting with the Grazia. This is a typically Honda scooter that does everything well and leaves little to complain about. But while that formula works well for mass volumes, it's just not good enough in this company and the Grazia lags behind in terms of individuality and the riding experience. At just over 62,000 rupees, the Grazia is quite expensive as well, second only to the SR125. The Aprilia, meanwhile, is full of character. It's fantastic to look at and it's outrageously fun to ride. But what holds it back from victory isn't just its high 66,000 rupee price tag, but also its weak feature offering and harsh ride quality. Ultimately, buying an SR means accepting some drawbacks in exchange for exciting performance. And by that logic, it's hard to justify the SR125 or the faster SR150, which costs just a few thousand rupees more. And that brings us to the end talk. TVS has scored another home run here. It's funky to look at, packed with features, and is a genuine pleasure to ride, both fast and slow. It's the definite winner here, and the fact that this is the most affordably priced scooter of these three is only icing on the cake.